What's going on YouTube? Bacon here bringing another video. This one going to be my week 6 battle for the MWPA. This week we are taking on Ben aka Shiny Sableye, coach of the Baltimore Oriolus. So um, coming into this match we're sitting at 3-2. and two. Ben is sitting at 2-3 and three, I believe. So definitely a big game for both of us here. Um, pretty much having 3 losses at this point in the season would mean that you kind of have to win out to make playoffs. I don't think 4-4 four and four is going to cut it here. I think you're going to need to be 5-3 and three to get in. Um, so hopefully we can pick up a win here, stay strong at this point in the season, and then have some leeway to potentially drop a game down the stretch. Um, but yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking coming into this match. Definitely a very scary matchup on tap, and uh, let's get right into it. So looking at Ben's side of the field, he's got Kieran Black, Mega Gallade, Heatran, Kartana, Latias, Azumarill, Mandibuzz, Nidoqueen, Klefki, Galvantula, and Alakazam. Um, huge offensive threats on his team like he's basically got this really nice webs offense here with Galvantula, Cortana, Kieran Black, Mega Gallade. Like none of his uh, Pokemon besides like Alakazam are particularly fast uh, but they hit incredibly hard. Um, very difficult for my team to deal with which is otherwise kind of a little bit passive with like the Celesteel plus Mew and um, Mega Venusaur core it tends to be a little bit more passive than maybe I would like. Um, but definitely a very difficult matchup on tap for us here. Just, I'm definitely expecting to see the Galvantula, as you can see it did come, and Mega Gallade, just a huge threat to my team. Otherwise, he really had a wealth of options he could bring. Not too surprised to not see the Azumarill, because I do have the Mega Venusaur, but I felt like I kind of still had to bring it to help deal with that. Uh, but on the kind of reverse side, he does have Triple Psychic to help deal with my Venusaur, so uh, definitely a very scary matchup here in general. Uh, but let's get into my side of the team builder and what I brought, so... Uh, starting off here, we've got Celestelia Girl and Celestela running Steelium Z with Heavy Slam, Earthquake, Flamethrower, and Autotomize. Running Mass Attack, Adamant Nature with enough speed to outrun a plus one Heatran, so i.e. Scarf Heatran. Um, Earthquake's obviously going to blow away the Heatran, Flamethrower's for the Kartana, and Heavy Slam hits more or less everything else. I mean, Earthquake plus Flamethrower also hits things like um, Klefki, Galvantula, Nidoqueen, I can do some big damage too. Uh, but in general, it's going to be the Steel move that's going to be kind of the main thing to get Celesteela going in this game. If I can get up my Autotomize, drop a Stidlium Z, and get my plus one boost, uh, I should be in a pretty decent spot to clean his team, depending on kind of focus sashes, how chipped things are at that point in the match. Uh, I feel like Celesteela offensively just had a really nice matchup in this one. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that I can get up my plus two on, but it's kind of a matter of how much offensive pressure is he putting on me first, and then how much can I kind of respond to that over the course of the match and potentially get this Autotomize off. So pretty much the main win con here with Celesteela. Um, like I said, really good matchup in this one, um, kind of just even defensively, its typing is quite nice as well to help deal with things like the uh, Kartana, for example. So um, yeah, it's a solid steel set, and uh, let's move on here to my Mega Venusaur. So we've got Mega Venusaur here running Synthesis, Earthquake, HP, Fire, and Sludge Bomb. Mostly running Spidef on this Mega Venusaur because it is kind of a good blanket check to some of his more especially offensive Pokemon, things like Nidoqueen. I can take hits from, I can take hits from Heatran because I do have Thick Fat. Uh, and I could take hits from, you know, uh, Galvantula, Neo Queen, all that kind of stuff. Um, in general, pretty decent blanket check versus team. Obviously, I have to worry about the multiple psychic types that he has on his side of the field. That could be pretty problematic for me. Uh, but having the Earthquake option to blow away Heat Ran is really nice. HP Fire for the Kartana. And then Sludge Bomb just kind of hits the rest of his team pretty nicely. Obviously, still gives me a super effective option to hit the Azumarill if he did happen to bring that. Uh, and Synthesis is just there to keep my uh, Venusaur healthy over the course of the match. It's definitely going to need to take quite a few hits, uh, I think, come into this one. So uh, really important to keep it healthy with the Synthesis there, as opposed to going for, like, Giga Drain or Leech Seed or something uh, on this particular set. Next up here, we have Mew, which I'm just now realizing that I forgot to nickname. Uh, we're in Culver Berry Mew with Earthquake, Will-O-Wisp, Softboil, and U-Turn. Um, basically, the idea of this Mew is to outspeed the Kieran Black. I do have a lot of speed investment. It's like a fast defensive type of Mew with a timid nature, um, or sorry, a jolly nature. Um, I'm running kind of a fast Mew here to get off that Will-O-Wisp on the uh, Curum Black, be able to burn that thing before it goes for like a Z-move on me. Uh, also, of course, being able to burn things like a Gallade, um, the Kartana would be pretty valuable for me in terms of kind of crippling his team going forward. U-Turn uh, is there for some decent initiative, and I'm predicting him to switch out of something like Gallade, because he might otherwise be walled by my, uh, by my Mew, or be fearing me to go for Will-O-Wisp. I can get some U-turn initiative off with the Mew there. Uh, and then Softball obviously is going to keep me pretty healthy over the course of the match. Um, pretty much every defensive variant of Mew should be carrying Rouge, Softboiled, whatever, um, to make sure it's staying healthy. So that's the uh, Mew set there. Culverary helps with the knockoff from Mega Glade. Other than that, pretty kind of standard looking uh, fast defensive Mew set. 
Next up here, we have Sylv Valley Dark, um, running Parting Shot, Defog, Multi-Attack, and Pursuit. Running max HP, max spadef. This is mostly to help with some of the psychic types, things like uh, Alakazam, Latias. I uh, can potentially pursue trap over the course of the match. I am running defog on this set because I am worried about the sticky webs offense, like I mentioned. Definitely was expecting to see the Galvantula that he did end up bringing. Uh, so definitely want to be able to defog those um, sticky webs at some point in the game if he does happen to get them up. I didn't really feel like I needed additional coverage on the Savali. The whole point of this thing is to come in on like specifically. Uh, Latias and Alakazam, get the defog off, get the sticky webs out, potentially pursue trap one of those problematic psychic types for my uh, Mega Venusaur, and uh, pretty much die after that. Like, there's not a whole lot that Silvalli has to do following that, so I uh, felt like I kind of needed a defogging option in this match. Mew didn't make a whole lot of sense to me because I kind of liked the rest of its set, uh, and then giving me something to help deal with his plethora of psychic types seemed pretty valuable to me as well. Next up here is Thick the Mammoth Swine, running Focus Sash Mammoth Swine with Oblivious, uh, Stealth Rock, Earthquake, Ice Shard, and Endeavor. Um, I'm not running Thick Fat on this set because Karen Black ignores it anyways. I didn't really feel like I'd be staying in on Heat Ram, or Heat Ram would be staying in on me rather, unless he was Choice Scarf. And even then, he'd probably be just going for a steel move anyways. Um, so I felt like Thick Fat really didn't do anything for me in this game. Oblivious allows me to get up my Stealth Rocks without being taunted. I don't know what he might be wanting to run Taunt on in this matchup, but you know, I. Like I said, didn't feel like Thick Fat really did anything for me in this one. Uh, Focus Sash obviously makes this a pretty decent lead option because nothing's going to be able to knock me out at lead. And like I mentioned, nothing's going to be able to taunt me either. So it should allow me to get up Stealth Rocks reasonably free uh, without too much issue. And then obviously I can, a decent uh, counter to a potential Galvantula lead. I can Earthquake that thing, break it down to its Focus Sash, pick it off with Ice Shard afterwards. If it goes for Sticky Web, my Sash will still be intact. So... I could potentially get my Stealth Rocks after that as well, prevent him from coming back in and resetting uh, the webs later in the game. Uh, in general, it's not that I think necessarily I want to keep my Stealth Rocks up over the course of the match, just kind of in the sense of an anti-lead to the Galvantula, I felt like Sash Mammoth Swine was, was going to do the trick here. Endeavor is also kind of nice, because if I pick something down to its uh, Focus Sash, like the Galvantula, like I mentioned, it's obviously got to fear me having Ice Shard. I can just go for Endeavor on the following turn, bring something else down to 1 HP, pick it off with Ice Shard, uh, that kind of thing over the course of the match. So I uh, really like the Mammoth Swine in this matchup. It's just kind of an anti-lead option. It does give me a Stealth Rocking option should I want it. Uh, and then also the Ice Shard priority can be nice. I can pick off some of its more offensive mods if they're already whittled down. Lastly here we have Digimon the Zero Aura. Running Life Orb Zero Aura with Plasma Fist, Knock Off, Drain Punch, and Bulk Up. Uh, because his fastest Pokemon on his team is the Alakazam, I'm able to run a ton of uh, HP investment on the Zero Aura, which is nice. I really don't need a whole lot of speed. Uh, and what that bulk's going to allow me to do is live hits from things like Scarf Cure and Black. I can live Scarf Outrage after Stealth Rocks, I believe, uh, with the Zero Aura set, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and then just really put a ton of offensive pressure on his team. The combination of Electric, Dark, and Fighting really just covers his entire squad. If he's running Choice Scarf Cartana, I can also live Leaf Blade, Drain Punch my health back, do some huge damage to that thing. Uh, at plus one, I believe Life Orb Drain Punch does knock out the Kartana, so that's something to note there. Uh, knock Off is there specifically for Psychic Types, mainly for the Latias, because that could be potentially his defensive answer to my Zara Aura. So definitely uh, pretty nice there to have the Knock Off for that. Uh, but otherwise, just kind of clicking buttons versus team is what Zara Aura is going to be able to do in this matchup. Also, a nice immunity to potential Prankster Thunder Wave that the Klefki might want to go for uh, if he is running that. Um... As long as webs aren't up, Zeraor is a really nice matchup uh, in this game, I think. So, uh, yeah, that's the squad here, and uh, let's get into it. So, as you can see, my opponent did bring the Galvantula, unfortunately, which is going to be able to get up webs versus me, for sure. Uh, Latias, Premier Black, Kartana, Mega Glade, and the Klefki. So, not too outside of what I was expecting to see, necessarily. Uh, again, not too surprised I didn't bring the Azumarill, because I do have the Mega Venusaur. Uh, he did bring Double Psychic, which is not great for my, um, my Venusaur, so... Uh, definitely not a great look at lead matchup here, but like I kind of mentioned in my team builder, Focus Ash Mammoth Swine should be able to deal with pretty much everything that he wants to lead with. Uh, and I do have some decent switch-ins to like Cartana, for example, uh, with my Venusaur and even my um, and even my Celesteela at this point in the match. So uh, I'm just going to lead off with my uh, Mammoth Swine and see what he wants to do. I'm pretty sure he was going to lead off with the Galvantula and try to, to uh, get up webs anyway, uh, as he does. So he's got the Galvantula in here, and I'm predicting this thing to just go for sticky web so there's really no reason for me to do anything but click earthquake here uh if he wants to switch out 
fine by me, but I'm going to get this uh, Galvantula down to its focus stash as he does go for these sticky webs. And he's obviously now threatened by Ice Shard. Uh, here I make, not necessarily, I'm certainly not a misplay, like I should probably not, uh, or I should probably go for Ice Shard here to make sure I pick off this Galvantula. Uh, but he actually elects to go out into the Latias here, potentially expecting me to go for Stealth Rocks as opposed to going for Ice Shard this turn. Uh, I do get a crit on that turn, but based on the damage, it looks like it might have been a two-hit KO anyway, so I'm not sure if it necessarily mattered. Uh, but it is going to force him to switch out of his Latias anyway as I go for another Ice Shard on the Kieran Black coming out. So uh, the Kieran Black is now in, and with webs up, I really don't have any switch-ins to Kieran Black, unfortunately. Uh, not that anybody has any switches to Kieran Black, so I'm just going to eat up that Ice Beam as he does a ton of damage to me. Unfortunately, I didn't go for Endeavor this turn, I just went for Earthquake. Uh, if I had gone for Endeavor, that would have been really sick. <laughs> Unfortunately, Ice Shard, I think he is out of range of, so I'm just going to have to uh, spam Earthquake at him as he goes for Roost here. Um, goes for Roost here to get some health back. Just want to keep this Kieran Black low so that it can't come in later in the game on predicted, uh, predicted switches from the Mega Venusaur, for example. Uh, being able to keep that thing low means it at least might be in range of not being able to come in later in the match. Uh, but he is going to be able to knock out my um, knock out my Mammoth Swine there with Ice Beam. So here I'm just going to go into Mew. I debated going out into Savali just to click Defog, but I felt like it was very possible that the Galvantula just came right back in anyways. So uh, I like to go out into Mew here and just go for will o -Wisp. If he wants to sack off the Kyurem, that's fine. Otherwise, I'll be getting a burn off on something, more or less killing something uh, at this point in the match, actually. So... Uh, get the will wisp off, able to KO the Kieran Black, big threat gone, uh, but the webs are still up on my side of the field, which is definitely problematic. So, uh, Muse in here, I'm at an okay range of HP, like I can't take a plus two hit from this Gallade anymore, uh, but he actually goes out into Gallade, which is kind of surprising to me, I was wondering what he was trying to do here, if he was just going to try to knock me out with knockoff, not predicting me to have Culverberry. Uh, so I did go for the will o -Wisp here, as he unfortunately reveals Substitute, I was really kicking myself for this play afterwards, because I was sitting in my team motor, like, if he has Substitute Gallade, I can break a Substitute with Earthquake from my Mew, and I went for a low wisp anyway when the game actually came around. Huge mistake, uh, because he ends up being sub-bulk up Gallade, which is super cash set versus me, uh, and obviously Earthquake's not going to break the Substitute after he goes plus one here. Uh, so now I've got to try and figure out how I'm going to deal with this Gallade. I'm basically hoping at this point that Earthquake plus U-Turn is going to be able to break the Substitute so I can get out into something like my Celesteela. Uh, but as you're going to see here, it does not. So uh, definitely in a very problematic situation here as he goes plus two versus me. Uh, Celesteela is still going to come out here because I need something to break this thing substitute. And with Sticky Webs up, my Zara Aura is not going to outspeed. Uh, so he goes for another bulk up here as I go for a Flamethrower to break the sub. And now it's like, well, my only hope really is to uh, Z-Steal this thing and hope it dies, more or less. Like, uh, I really don't have a whole lot of other options at this point. He actually reveals that he's going for another substitute here, which was really kind of a no drawback play for him, unfortunately. Uh, he's going to be able to go for another substitute here, and I'm basically going to waste off my Z-move. Uh, at this point, there's not a whole lot that I can do. Like, he's going to go for another substitute here, because again, it's really no drawback when you see what he's about to, when he's about to drop on me, but uh, it's really no drawback for him to keep going for these substitutes and, and kind of waste off some of my moves, see if he can keep a sub up. Uh, Heavy Slam, fortunately, is going to break it, but he's got Drain Punch, so that's basically GG at this point. Like, with webs up, I've got nothing to outspeed this. My only hope is to crit him with Heavy Slam, as, as you can see, I do not. Uh, so I go for Heavy Slam there. Fortunately, not able to crit and, uh, and break through here, but really nice Glade set, for sure. Um, sub bulk up was definitely not something I was anticipating versus me, because I thought he might want, like, coverage options. I fi figured he'd want Fighting plus Psychic, for sure, uh, and then probably be running, like, Knock Off or something to help deal with my Mew. I really wasn't thinking that he'd have room for both uh, setup move and uh, substitute, but unfortunately, as you can see, he did. Uh, ran sub bulk up with drain punch, and um, he's just gonna blow through my team at this point, unfortunately. So uh, I believe I'm gonna bring out the Venusaur here and find out that he didn't actually. Oh no, I brought out Mew. I brought out Mew here, and I'm actually gonna find out that he didn't even have um, uh, psychic coverage. So I could have potentially gone into my Venusaur a little bit earlier, but like, who predicts a Mega Gallade to not be running Zen Headbutt? So. Uh, very unfortunate for me that this is kind of the way it's gone uh, at this point. Like, I, I felt like I started off pretty decently. I got the Galvantula down to its focus sash. got some huge chip damage off on the uh, Latias that came in. Kieran Black went down fairly quickly. Like, I was at a decent start, but I never really had a chance or really put myself in a position where I was going to be able to get rid of the sticky webs on my side of the field, uh, which essentially allowed this Glade to pretty much clean my team. So, uh, Really cool set, again, uh, to Ben on bringing this uh, sub-bulk up Glade. Really nice prep uh, on his end. 
Unfortunately for us, that means we are sitting at three and three at this point in the season, and this is definitely the hardest I've ever gotten wheelchaired in draft, unfortunately. Uh, so hopefully we can come back uh, next game and, and kind of rectify some of the mistakes that were made here. Definitely didn't prep enough uh, for the Mega Kalade, I think, or at least the Sticky Web offense combination uh, that he brought here. So hopefully next time I can prep a little bit better, play a little bit better, and um, maybe make a playoff push here late in the season. Like I said, we are sitting at 3-3, three and three, so we're not out of it yet. Uh, but it does kind of make these last two games must-wins, uh, in my opinion. So hopefully we can do that going forward. And uh, yeah, thank you guys very much for watching to this point. If you did, hope to see you all in another video. I'll catch you next time.